Um, I'm going to call um, Catherine Delahunty. Thank you very much, Tēnā Koto Katoa, Tēnā Koe, Mr Chair. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to talk about part three because I feel like there's something missing in it. There's an education that obviously whoever drafted it missed out on. Where are the men? Do you know how, sorry Mr Chair, does, do the people who drafted this know how children are conceived? Because the responsibility has not been clearly explained in the bill. All we hear is bad woman. Bad woman, bad beneficiary, bad mother. That is the meme that is around the bill. Whatever the intention, this is what part three has achieved with the sanctions and the work testing is bad mother because dad wasn't anything to do with it. There is no father in this picture. She conceived immaculately. She must take responsibility for having more than one child on the DPB that all by herself, she got pregnant. There is no two people in this story. There is one and she will pay. And having worked with beneficiaries on a regular basis with sole mothers, I'd just like to say to them out there, the, the women out there who are listening, the Green Party does not hate you for having more than one child on the benefit, and nor do we think that you did it by yourself, nor do we think that if you're not in work you are failing your children, nor do we think that staying at home with your children is a waste of time, nor do we think that breastfeeding over the age of one is a bad thing. In fact, the World Health Organization says it's a really good thing, and we would like to support you mothers to do just that. And we don't happen to think that because you don't have a partner who can support you, you are a bad mother if you don't want to go out to work when you have a one-year-old, a three-year-old, a six-year-old or a seven-year-old and you're a sole parent. Because I know hundreds of women who are being mum and dad. Everyone in this house knows them. They are doing double the work. Exactly, they're doing double the work that sole, that, that two-parent families do. They're doing twice the work. And if they've got an extended family or whanau who can back them up, maybe going into work is a great option for them if they can find a job. That's fabulous. But having lived in Tairawhiti and seen woman after the woman come into our benefit service and all they want to do is do a good job as a parent, but they cannot afford to feed their kids because not only is the benefit system too low, but they're being work tested and there is no work. I invite the members who think it's easy, go and walk down the street of, the, of many of our small towns and ask for a job that's going to fit with your four or five kids if you're a sole parent. Go and ask for it, because that's what they're doing when they're work tested, they're going door to door, they're asking for a job and they're ticking the box, but they're not getting one because there are only so many that fit neatly with actually the responsibility of being a good parent. And if you decide that you will be home at three o'clock for your children, is that a failure? And if you decide that that baby is going to be fed past one year old, are you a bad parent? And if you cannot get a job and you get sanctioned, who is going to benefit? No one's going to benefit at all. Our whole society, when we attack mothers and children, fails. This afternoon I just went to a seminar with Kids Can, who are an independent charity who said that 1 in 11 children are living in poverty. They said that 15,000 children don't get enough food and many of those parents are not bad people. They are people who do not have enough money and job creation doesn't exist to help them get out of poverty. So instead of focusing on how they can make the SOP of Holly Walkers too expensive, it would be really good if the government recognised that there are many situations where the word discretion is very important in the benefit system. When we had the special benefit, when case managers were encouraged to be human rather than punitive, there was room to acknowledge the situation. And I've spent more time in the Work and Income Office probably than many people in this house. I've spent a lot of time there advocating alongside people who found it really difficult to say, I am not a bad mother, I want to stay home with my children and I need to stay home with them because one of them's got asthma every third week, another one has a learning disability and I'm feeding a baby. I don't know what world people come from when they think that motherhood, when you're a sole parent and you've got more than one child, is somehow a lifestyle. A lifestyle. That's one of the most offensive things I've ever heard. When I know the struggles of these women to try and live, to try and provide their kids with what 
I am glad to be able to have provided for my daughter. I am a fortunate one. I am a blessed one that I was able to live, to get an education and to work. But I have met so many women just as just as um, committed to being a parent as me who are now being punished. Mr Chair, Mr um, Chair. I'm going to call Pasetta Sam Lutwinger. Thank you, Mr Chair. And, and, and thank